with every day that passes, does the risk to the world's energy supply just grow? Well, first, uh, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's great to be on. Look, we're at, a, at an important point, and as you said, the Houthis' uh, reckless attacks uh, and irresponsible attacks in the, in the Red Sea uh, and in the Straits have already caused some disruption. Uh, the United States cares deeply about ensuring that the waterways and the freedom of navigation is secured. That is true for energy products uh, from the Middle East, but uh, that is also affecting other all shipping uh, through the region. Uh, the United States is joined now by, uh, in a coalition of uh, approximately 10 countries already, uh, in making sure that there are patrols, uh, surveillance patrols of aircraft and ships, mm -hmm. uh, and to take defensive measures if needed. Uh, we continue to have con uh, other conversations with allies uh, to ensure that we have a coalition. And the reason for that is because this is not a U.S. concern. This is a global markets uh, concern and global security, yeah. economic security. Uh, but I will say, so far, uh, I know prices have gone up a little bit uh, in oil, but very little bit. Uh, by and large, uh, we've seen a prices of commodities come down. Uh, which has contributed to inflation coming down. We've seen gasoline prices come down. So I think we're doing uh, okay for now managing this, but we're following this very, very carefully. Absolutely. And as you talk about the defensive measures the U.S. and allies are taking, this maritime task force, of course, is an effort underway. But Bloomberg has also reported this week that the administration is looking at potentially going on offense, directly striking the Houthis where they are in Yemen. We know that other Arab allies, though, may have concerns about that. Take Saudi Arabia, which has had Yemen and the Houthi rebels actually strike its facilities in the not-so-distant Pass. How worried are you about actual in, in energy infrastructure that could be disrupted by a retali retaliatory attack? Well, let's take things one thing at a time. I think what we've announced so far is that we are going to take defensive measures and we're going to escort uh, and, and have, sorry, have uh, uh, patrols of surveillance patrols of aircraft and, and uh, ships in the region in order to bring uh, more confidence uh, to the shipping companies, cargo uh, companies, as they uh, patrol the area. I, I think so far we have not seen uh, attacks on energy infrastructure, and that has been secure. And we've, we can see that, and the market is, while pricing in some, some risk, is also understands that so far there has not really been a disruption beyond a, uh, a minor increase in cost of uh, transiting uh, through, other, uh, through other areas uh, around the Cape of Good Hope or other waterways in order to be able to get cargo uh, and not, again, energy and other cargo uh, to their destination peacefully and securely. So on the subject of prices, as you say, they are up a, a bit as a result of what we're seeing in the Red Sea, though not dramatically. Yet we have seen in the years of the pandemic, a real shortfall of energy can very quickly lead to seriously higher oil prices. And there were a lot of calls from this administration during the pandemic for OPEC to, to be pumping more. There was, of course, the tapping of the SPR. Is the U.S. prepared to make up the shortfall? Should we actually see a shortfall coming from the Middle East? Because, of course, it's not just the Red Sea we have to think about, but the Strait of Hormuz as well. Uh, first, I, I want to make sure that our viewers know that there, there is no shortfall uh, in energy products. There is no attacks on energy mm. infrastructure at the moment. We are always looking at uh, multiple scenarios that could affect uh, the markets and energy infrastructure in particular because uh, of the importance that they play in the global economy. But at the moment, uh, the risk is not to the infrastructure or to the availability of supply but rather to the route in which the supply will take in order to get to market and the extra costs that could be associated uh, with that route. So I think that we're, we feel comfortable that we're uh, not going to see a disruption, uh, but rather the potential, but we are very concerned about uh, the, the, the attacks on the ships that would affect maritime freedom of navigation mm -hmm. and maritime ability to get around the world for for cargo that is so important. And again, this is, I, I want to stress, this is not just an American thing, this uh, concern. Mm. This is a global concern. This affects Asia and Europe uh, as much as it does any other part of the world. And uh, as they rely on these waterways, and that's why it's important that this is now a coalition and our call to Iran and to everyone else is to, for the Houthis uh, to really cease from this uh, very dangerous uh, kind of activity in, uh, of attacks in the, in the, uh, in the region. 
Well, you say this is not just an American problem. And here in America, we certainly are seeing that gasoline prices are much lower this holiday than they were at this time last year. We're also seeing that U.S. shale is pumping a lot more crude, a record, uh, in fact, according to data we just got this week. Amos, should we expect that to continue keeping climate and transition goals in mind? Well, I, so a couple of points. One, as you said, gasoline prices at the pump for American consumers are uh, as low as they've been in a couple of years, and uh, almost three years. And uh, that is good news for American consumers as you go into a holiday a uh, couple of weeks of Christmas and New Year's uh, with a lot of travel time. And we've already seen reports from AAA that expecting a lot of travel uh, auto travel uh, this week. So it's good to have these lower prices. It's helping American families. It directly hits at the pocket. It also affects food prices and other commodity prices that Americans uh, have to see at their supermarkets and other stores. So it's a good news story. The president has wanted to bring down these prices. Uh, he's not satisfied they're low enough, uh, but it's a good start. But we have, the president has wanted to do two things at the same time, accelerate the energy transition and move towards renewables and electric vehicles, while at the same time ensuring we have enough uh, hydrocarbons and fossil fuels to be able to manage the transition without a economic shock or an energy shock. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing that the production in the United States is up uh, while yeah. we're still seeing advances in our energy transition. And that's, that's the kind of balance that we're looking for.